I've been using Luminar for a few months now, and I wanted to share a quick example of how to edit a photograph using this software. I've found the interface to be very elegant and user-friendly, and overall, the software is simple without being simplistic. I've really enjoyed my time using it, and I'm excited about uh, where it's going to go in the future. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, when you open up a photograph into Luminar, you may or may not see all of the same panels that I have visible here. If anything is missing, then just go ahead and start clicking on some of these toggles at the top. If the button has a white outline, then that means that that specific panel is hidden. If it's highlighted in orange, then you can see it. So if you see any of these that might be white, just go ahead and click on them until they turn orange and then you'll be able to see that panel that is not visible. Another thing that may be different in your version is that you might not have this tab bar visible. This is something that I prefer to view. I like seeing the name of the image that I'm working on, but if I have more than one photo that I'm working on individually, I like to have them all in one collective application as opposed to having them kind of open up separately. If I were just to open up a normal photo into Luminar, it would kind of create like a separate application window and that just feels like it gets a little bit cluttered for me. If you don't see this tab bar, go to view, show tab bar. And then when you want to add more images that you want to work on, just click on this little plus icon and it will bring up a window for you to locate any file that you'd like to open. Now I'm going to go ahead and get started processing this image. I'm going to start out by applying a preset. Now I have the basic preset category selected and you can find it by clicking on that category selector and then all of the default presets along with presets you would download from MacFun's site would also appear here as well. I'm going to go over to the foreground brighter preset and click on it and that automatically fills a bunch of filters into my filter panel. I really like what this preset is doing, um, but at the very top here, this top and bottom lighting, it seems to be adding too much of a harsh transition of the bright and dark areas there. So I'm going to kind of increase the width of this transition. So I'm going to click on the set orientation box, and now I can increase the feather of that transition. I'll click on it again to hide it. And now if I toggle that on and off, it's giving me a little bit more of a softer transition from the top to the bottom of my image. I'm going to leave all of the other filters here as is, but I'm going to add a few more of my own. I also don't need to access those presets any longer. So I'm going to click on the preset panel on the top to hide those presets. So now I have a little bit more space to view my image. You can add filters in one of two ways. Click on the top right to add a filter. And you can also use the button at the very bottom to add a filter as well. I'll go ahead and add a saturation and vibrance filter. And I'm just going to boost it a little bit. I don't want to overdo the color because I want it to look vibrant without looking unrealistic. So I'll just toggle that one on and off by clicking on that little orange button. I'll go ahead and add another filter. This time I'm going to select Orton Effect. I'll move the amount slider to the right just a little bit and I'll go ahead and toggle that off and on to see how that looks. I really like this specific filter. It feels like it's giving me a similar effect that I've created in Photoshop, uh, which kind of adds a little bit of a, a contrasty, vibrant punch to the image. I'm going to do a before and after toggle by using my backslash key. Just press and hold it to see my before and after. Things are looking really nice. I really like the way that the gradients that have been added using the preset are highlighting the main feature of my image, which is the cat. And then your eye can kind of wander up uh, towards that little stairway up in the top right. But to kind of accentuate that, I'm going to finish the filters off by adding a vignette. So I'll click on Add Filter, and I'll go to Vignette, click Vignette. And I'm just going to slide my amount slider to the left. Sometimes I over exaggerate my vignette when I'm creating it because I like to really see where it's being positioned. So for now, I'm just going to keep it really dark. That way I can more easily see some of the other changes when I uh, move around some of the other sliders. So I'm going to move the roundness slider to the right. And I'm also going to really increase the feather. I like very feathered vignettes. 
And I'm going to add a little bit of inner brightness as well, just kind of add a little bit of contrast. I'd also like to relocate the center of my vignette. Uh, like I just said previously, I want the cat to kind of be the main focus of this image. So I want your eyes to really gravitate towards that. And so the brighter that section is in comparison to the background, um, the more likely you're going to focus in on that first. So I'll go ahead and click on that place center button. And then I'll just click in the bottom left third, not right over the cat because I think it might push it a little too far. And now I'm going to move that amount slider back to the right, maybe about minus 30 or so. Now if I toggle this on and off, it's adding just a nice subtle vignette there uh, to really kind of add a little bit more contrast to those areas of my image. I'm finished adding filters, but before I finish, I wanted to show you one quick thing inside of the filters. When you click on add filter and you scroll through, you get a little preview off to the left of what these filters will actually do to an image. I really like these little previews. I think they're really helpful, especially if you're new to Luminar. It gives you a really good idea of what they're going to do. But if you prefer not to see those little previews off to the left, click on this little toggle and it will hide it. Uh, I'm going to keep mine active because I really do like seeing those. But that's just a quick little tip about the add filter panel. All right, next what I'd like to do is I want to kind of erase some of the little areas in the bottom part of the image. There's a little bit of trash and maybe some food particles on the ground. And I mean, this is kind of a grungy scene to begin with, but I want to clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to click on the erase tool. And then I'm going to zoom in to 100% press and hold that space bar to kind of pan over to the areas that I want to work on. I'm going to leave the settings as is, but I am going to reduce the brush size a little bit and then sweep over those areas. They won't uh, erase right away. You basically choose everything you want to erase first and it just highlights it in red there. And I'm going to increase my brush size with that right bracket key. And let's get rid of this little blob there. And I think that's good. Let me do a quick pan around the image. I think I saw something on the wall here I wanted to get rid of as well. And I think that's good. So I'll go ahead and click apply. I'll let it work its magic. And when it's finished, it's going to put those changes on a brand new layer. So if I toggle this layer on and off, you can see the before and after of just those erased areas. And it did a pretty good job. Last but not least, I'm going to do a quick crop of my image. I'll choose the crop tool on the right. And in the settings at the top, I want to make sure that I am cropping with the original ratio. And then I'll click and drag on the bottom right there. And I'm just going to crop out all of that kind of stair area on the bottom. It was kind of bothering me the way it was positioned and I'll click apply. Now I'll do a before and after toggle to see all those changes I made here in Luminar. Now once I'm finished with my image, I can save it and I can export it. When I go to file save, that is to save the original document, the original edits. Basically it's like a Photoshop or a PSD document or maybe a layered TIFF document that you would work off inside of Photoshop. This saves all of the filters, the layers, and it can even save the history as well. You might want to do this if you're working on photos that you may need to refer to later or working on an image for a client who might have some requests for changes. The great thing about saving these files is that you are saving all of your history, all of your filters, um, and everything. So you can go back and, and really make changes to this image as needed uh, without having to start over. I'll go ahead and cancel this for now. And more likely, what you'll want to do is probably export the file. So if you click on this little export button, the export to image button will save the file just like any other image. I'll click on that so you can see. So you can sharpen it, you can resize it, and you can select your color space and even your format. The other options here are to share to email, social media, or a photo sharing website if you have any accounts with those. 
If you're interested in trying out Luminar yourself, go to macfun.com where you can download a free trial. And if you'd like to save $10 on your purchase of Luminar, use the code NICOLSY. That's N-I-C-O-L-E-S-Y.